Hello and welcome to this video to show you how to install Algae Pilot on the TBS all-in-one that I've been using inside my TBS Gepito, but also to just point out there is a little bit of a wrinkle with the port, so just be careful of that. I had a couple of people ask for this, so this is for all of you that kind of sent me a message saying, what about Algae Pilot? It can absolutely run Algae Pilot, like most of the other flight controllers in the TBS stable. And that's because Team Black Sheep actually work closely with the Algae Pilot guys. And Trappy actually flies a lot of his own personal craft on things like Algae Pilot too. So let's go on the bench. I'll go through each of the steps of how you do it. It isn't very different from all the other ones I've shown on the channel. But stay to the end and I'll go through some of the wrinkles with that port stuff. So to install Ardu Pilot onto this TBS all-in-one wing flight controller is very similar to lots of other videos that I've already talked about. Again, link down below if you want to go and check those out. We're going to download the hex file from the Ardu Pilot site for this particular flight controller and then load it on using either Betaflight or iNav config configurator is the way that I would do it here. Once it's on, then we can connect to it and configure it as we would with any other flight controller using Mission Planner. So it's not particularly tricky or difficult. I'll put links down below again to all those other things, how you set up Express LRS, how you set up things like HDFPV. Lots of things are probably going to be preset on here, but let's actually do it live. At the moment, this has been shipped with iNav. I would recommend before you get too far into this, I would plug it into iNav and just do a dump of the configuration, save that configuration file somewhere. I've done that in this one. It means that I've got it handy if I want to go back, if I want to change things. Next job then is to get hold of the actual file, the firmware file that we're gonna put on here. And to do that, we need to be on the computer. So let's come out of iNav, Jump into a web browser, and here we are on the page, Team Black Sheep, Serious Toys, this is the flight controller we're playing with. If we zoom down here, it'll tell us what the RD pilot target is that we need. Now, um, obviously the iNav one is already on it. So knowing that, then we can actually download it from the RD pilot firmware download area. Don't worry, and put these links in the description down below. So we're gonna zoom down, we're gonna put plane on it for the moment. We'll go into stable. We need to zoom down to find the TBS flight controller that we're going to use. Um, it's not quite in order, but there we go. TBS Lucid H7 Wing is the one we want. If you want to know what version it is, click on firmware version. We can see it's 462. That's nice and current. So we will download Ardu playing with BL Hex. If you just click on it, it'll download. We need to put that onto the desktop where we're going to use it. I've already done that. So now we have that file, we can use iNav or Betaflight Configurator to put it on here because it appears like any other file. So what we're going to do is we'll go into firmware flasher. We will load the firmware local and we will pick the file that we've just downloaded. There it is, so I'll say open. I'm gonna click no reboot sequence. The reason that I'm doing that is when I plug it in, I'm actually going to hold the boot button on here that's gonna put it in DFU mode and then it's just gonna work. So I'm gonna press the button. And I'm gonna plug the flight controller into the computer. And here at the top, you can see it's appeared as DFU. So it's device firmware update mode. So we can just go flash firmware. And what it'll do is first of all, it's going to erase the flight controller and then it's going to flash the hex file onto it, which is Ardu plane, I've just downloaded, and then we can have a play with it. So you just need to sit and let it run through this. And then when it's finished, we'll be able to kind of connect with Mission Planner and have a bit of a play. I'll fast forward this to the end. Just be aware, it does take a little bit longer than flashing it with iNav. So just be patient with this. And here we go, we're finally coming into verifying. And then once that's complete, programming successful, our new pilot is now here on this flight controller. Now, I would just give it five or 10 seconds just to finish doing everything that it needs to do. Let's close our friend iNav. And what we'll do is we'll start Mission Planner. I'm going to unplug the flight control at this point because I want a nice clean boot for it to come in as a 
our Dupilot flight controller. So now we have everything ready. Let's plug it in for the first time as an RD Pilot flight controller. Now, interestingly, we have two connections here. One of them is for Mavlink and one of them is for CAN. So again, because this flight controller has a CAN bus output here on the side, we can connect to that second port and speak to the CAN connected devices and configure them. We don't want that. So Mavlink's probably going to want the need. We'll click on connect. And this looks very promising. Here we go. So now if I move the flight controller here on the table, you can see the artificial horizon is moving and we are now running Arduplane. So once it's all flashed, then you go through the standard setup just as you would. There is one word of caution though. If you have it set it up on iNav and done the wiring as shown in the diagram, the default ports currently are not going to line up with what iNav is. If we go into the ports tab, then you can see, for example, that UART2 is set for the GPS, UART6 is set for the receiver, and that matches what is in the Arduino Pilot documentation. However, if you look in the documentation, the manual for the Lucid Flight Controllers, you'll see here that it's actually the other way around. So you're gonna to have to spend a little bit of time just coming into here and tweaking things to put things like the GPS back on UART6 and the receiver back on things like UART1 or UART2. Just be aware of that. Otherwise, when you flash it with RD Pilot, the GPS and stuff won't work. Will this change in future? Seems the RD Pilot developers seem to be confident that this is the best way to do it. However, it is confusing and I would very much hope in the future that the port alignment in RD Pilot matches the same in iNav and then swapping between the two is really easy. The last bit of setup, of course, that's specific to this TBS all-in-one flight controller is the outputs are staged a little bit differently than normal. So you're gonna to have to go into the outputs and go and configure it like this. So set outputs one and two to the LF on left and LF on right, and then also select output seven to be the throttle. That is where the ESC that's inside the unit is going to be connected to standard stuff of how to configure the outputs nothing again different here but just a reminder that that is going to need to be done in order to match how everything is set up by default in the flight controller so that's how you do it not particularly tricky just with the exception of that port wrinkle you can get this done in a relatively short space of time and take your tbs Gepito to a whole nother level running hardy play Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.